Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 12 Days of Security. My name is Akira Brand, and I am joined today by Jonathan Benoon. Welcome, Jonathan. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me for a chat. Yeah, thank you so much for being here and for your time. We are very excited to get your opinion on these questions and kind of hear your unique viewpoint. So thank you again for coming. So Jonathan, can you just kick us off a little bit and tell us about yourself? Yes, absolutely. And hello, everyone. I started my career doing a bunch of technical roles. Uh, I was a software developer, comp sci major, did security consulting all the way to risk management, risk assessment, and uh, in pen testing. And then eventually transitioned full stack product management and go-to-market leadership, companies such as Cisco and OneLogin, as well as advising and consulting to startups and enterprises in Silicon Valley. And then now at Bright, I lead the global product team uh, of product managers, product designers, technical writers, and researchers. And in my personal life, I live in the beautiful city of San Francisco, and I do lots of different things in my personal time from uh, from trying ramen uh, dishes and playing sports and training in martial arts and right now sipping on really good peppermint tea. Right on. I love that you do martial art in addition to having this amazing career. I wonder how much of the discipline of martial art has fed your ability to do all these different things in your career so far. That's an excellent question. I would say, so I am a practitioner of Aikido. I'm still a couple of tests away from my black belt, but you know, no, I don't, I don't know about this year, but hopefully very, very soon. And Aikido has enriched my life in so many ways. And mm -hmm. I also take a lot of, um, a lot, I've gained a lot of insights that have to do with um, either a creative approach to life, a structured approach to life, a structured approach to professional practices, martial mm -hmm. arts, especially if you take that path, it, teach you, it teaches you a lot about mastery, which I think is really, really important. And so I've gained some wonderful lessons on the path to mastery uh, based on, based on my, um, my martial arts background. That's beautiful. I mean, there's the path to mastery. There's also like the intense relationship between like a student and teacher. You're showing respect for your colleagues. That's, that's wonderful. That's, I'm really glad you have that in your life. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> I am. I um, I think you learn a lot about etiquette. You learn a lot about um, about kata. So just the form, how to be very strict with your form, and how that applies to to again different areas. For instance, of professional development. And um, I've so one thing that's interesting about Aikido, it has a very rich philosophy about um, the yin and the yang about awase. So. I'm actually going to even do that. What we call awase in Japanese, so blending. So the philosophy in Aikido at a very high level is blending with the attack. So the ability to receive attack, blend it uh, with it, and then use the opponent's force against them. And I think there's some really interesting lessons there, again, in, in, uh, in one's personal life, but also professionally and especially in our theme, which is security. You know, I think we could talk all, all day about Aikido and how it feeds in your professional life, but I'm, I'm glad you made that segue into security, which is uh, what we're here to talk about today. So I'm curious, Jonathan, in the world of security, what really happened this year that stood out to you? That's a good question. So, you know, having this, this super technical background and having experienced a lot of things um, uh, at a very technical level, uh, for instance, vulnerabilities like hard bleed, if you've been in security for a long time, or all sorts of uh, open SSL issues that we've had over the years. So the micro level is always interesting because software is never going to be uh, any less complex than it is right now. It's just going to keep getting more and more complex. And we're going to keep finding, you know, uh, earth shattering vulnerabilities to major solutions and, and, um, and products that we all use. Um, and I think another way to look at this is at the macro level, 
like global events, which I think this year specifically is the more interesting angle. So let's talk about that for a minute and mm -hmm. specifically about geopolitics or the geopolitical climate. I think it's been a difficult, uh, difficult year to say the least with more war, more casualties and more refugees. And my heart goes out to them and to their families. And it also means political and economic instability. And in the background, that changes so much for uh, matters so much and changes so much in the cybersecurity landscape on several levels, such as um, the increased activity of state actors, that governments are experiencing more threats than they used to, and that there's just generally more concerns around the targeting of global companies. So I think all that coming together um, is, is likely to keep pushing security to, to its new limits of whether it's, it's global management, global risk management, or just uh, understanding how to respond better to global threats. Mm -hmm. But definitely wishing us all to have um, uh, a more peaceful year in 2023. I agree. I think that would be... It would be a blessing to have more, more peace this upcoming year. And you mentioned a bit about pushing cybersecurity to its limits. I'm curious what you think the limits of cybersecurity are right now, and maybe those areas you mentioned. That 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 is a good question. Um, so let's let's talk about something very simple, which is you know, for some of us who have been around cybersecurity, a lot of the measures that we used to take. Um, have been have been things like geofencing, so the ability to just uh, block attacks based on geolocation and, and IP restriction. And since you know, since then, in last uh, five, ten plus years, uh, we've we've seen gradually how that does not work anymore, at least not very well. And whether it's uh, whether it's concepts like like zero trust that have entered our our environments. And we're trying to follow them in principle. And so, uh, especially with, with other things that I think we're, we're going to touch on today, such as AI, machine learning, remote work, all these things uh, coming together, uh, it just means that a lot of the old ways um, are going to be even less effective in coming years. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's just incremental changes, small changes, but also geopolitical climate, um, COVID-19, the way that has changed the way we look at hybrid, the way that changed um, remote work, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden all companies, for instance, um, are, are some sort of hybrid or remote, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, or all companies, are, are the, I think what I used to say is all companies are now all of a sudden distributed companies and mm -hmm. um, to some extent. And it means that their attack surface mm -hmm. is is a lot is a lot bigger. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully, again, wishing us all a more peaceful year in twenty twenty three. But definitely more cybersecurity threats to come. It's interesting you mentioned that all companies are now essentially in some in some way, shape, or form distributed companies. It also seems that all companies now are in some way, shape, or form tech companies, which also greatly increases attack surfaces. So for example, like a giant big box chain store no longer just sells products in, in their stores. Now they have an entire online component, things of this nature. So you have these cybersecurity threats that are so much larger because not only is the workforce distributed, but the way that products and services are being sold is also distributed. Yeah, I, I, I love that point. This is exactly right because what has been the key theme for solutions and for enablement of productivity in that changing world? Or if not productivity, then at least the ability to continue to streamline businesses. Mm -hmm. it's, it's with technology, right? There's no other way. And yeah. so uh, it's that same technology that, uh, that gets compromised and is vulnerable to all sorts of threats. And so I, I love your point, I think, and this is exactly where we come in. 
So on that note, I'm kind of curious how, um, how you faced some challenges this year, like which ones you faced and how you overcame them. It could be in relationship to this topic we just covered, or we could totally go a different direction too. I just, I'm curious what challenges that you faced this year. Totally. It's interesting. I think on a personal level, it, it just been the, it just has been one more layer of coming out of COVID. Because at the end of the day, if, you know, 2021 was the year of vaccine, um, uh, right, 2021 was the year of the vaccine, we still have had miles to go to, you know, our first, I think, in-person conferences and most companies did not have uh, in 2021, uh, or at least until very late 2021. And so um, I think uh, easing back into that world has definitely been uh, challenging traveling more mm. and, and trying to figure out how to integrate that with um, with life. Mm -hmm. And then professionally, I joined Bright only about three months ago. And so I'm still getting to know my team and the technology. I'd say that uh, in my line of work, my biggest challenge has been bridging between, on the one hand, the demand for our product. And on the other hand, the need to lead a clear forward-looking plan. Mm -hmm. So let me explain what I mean by that. I think the, I think customers um, only recently realized the big gap that they have that automated security, um, and specifically automated security tooling like DAS, need to fill. And so they have been mostly reacting to it. And we've been sensing this increased uh, demand. And at the same time, as veterans who have seen a number of you know, changes in landscape and generations of, of technologies and specifically security technologies, we know that the road ahead needs to be uh, more structured. Mm. Specifically, even the best technology requires putting a lot of thought into the right rollout and integrated processes at an enterprise level. And so we're spending a lot of time with our customers now to plan together how 2023 is going to be the year of accelerated adoption of automated security. So it sounds like that's the way you negotiate these two things is you have this need to be strategic and roll out in a very structured manner, yet you also need to respond to customer demand. So the way that you do that is you listen to the customer while also planning alongside of them. Exactly. And it'll give you one, one specific thing that one specific thing that I think is our focus uh, for, for 2023. It's difficult for uh, for security. For, and by security, I mean security organizations to integrate all of the solutions that they have planned into the organization, right? Some things that you need to roll out, such as, um, let's say, security training for an entire organization. And then even then you, you have to layer it, such as um, from, from uh, certifications to, to, to basic training to all sorts of, for instance, simulations like phishing. Mm -hmm. social engineering and and when when you talk about our our specialty which is which is DAST or just security automation um, or securing applications then it's a, a it's about working with developers a lot a lot more closely and mm -hmm. so I think a big focus for us is going to be uh, the developer experience and helping security teams understand and work together with uh, with their development teams on how to work um, in a way that's a lot more integrated. So looking forward with, on this theme of looking forward, what do you think is going to happen next year, both the good and the bad? Ooh, um, so much to say about that. <clears throat> so um, let's talk about something. I, I'm not going to be super original here, but let's talk about AI, right? AI, machine learning, and specifically, I think the interesting part is the packaging, accessibility, and consumerization of, of uh, AI and machine learning driven products. What's interesting uh, to a lot of people that maybe haven't been uh, around as, uh, so much is that AI and machine learning are not new. Um, they've been around for a while, um, but it's been taking a long time for 
for performance in uh, you know computational power and uh, in other other parts of it such, such as the packaging and productization to catch up. Mm-hmm. So if we take something very specific such as chat GPT that everybody's talking about these days, uh, now you have a tool that's a lot more accessible and a lot easier for consumption. And so that can be, uh, you know, can be used for something like social engineering at scale of a sign, right? It, to, to put it in plain words, now hackers globally have access to this tool, which is a lot better than just using you know, broken English. Um, and, um, and at the same time, uh, maybe this can also be used for something like security training at scale, such as, you know, smarter phishing simulations. Mm-hmm. And I think we can draw similar conclusions for other forms of machine learning and AI that can also be productized better. And um, and so uh, again, I, I think how GPT is just uh, one of the more approachable parts of the machine learning story. How AI is getting productized and how more people can use it effectively without uh, much hassle. So I think 2023 is going to yield a lot more interesting stories on that front. We're going to see certainly two sides of the same coin over and over again. Exactly, because at, at, at the same time, uh, what we're going to do, what we're going to use, not necessarily Chad GPT, but other similar tools, other similar technology, is generate more effective attacks, more generate uh, more payloads, more ways of testing security uh, effectively, or just generally software effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, using that AI generated power to to run things like more in more uh, targeted DAS scans, maybe more targeted SAS scans, things of this nature. And we'll see how the tools integrate with AI technology. That'll be really interesting. Yeah. So Jonathan, my last question for you before I let you go today is what security gift do you want for the holidays? Ah, this is gonna be fun. So I already mentioned like so many things that I, I, I like in my personal life and I love dogs. And I think, you know, as a human, the dogs love us, right? So they want to spend time with us. They want to cuddle and they want to play ball and they want to chillax. And they also want to help. And so the security gift that I want for the holidays is that dogs would be able to sniff out security vulnerabilities, right? I mean, think about that. This is something we do in physical security. Can we extend that to software? And I think, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And so any dog that chooses to make good use of that special power of sniffing out security vulnerabilities will also be very deserving of very special treats. So that is the special security gift that I want for the holidays. Um, Jonathan, that is the most imaginative answer I've ever heard to that question. (laughs) Well done. Well, more power to dogs. That's what I say. Absolutely. I think so, too. I think so, too. All right, listeners, we have been with Jonathan Benoon today. Um, Again, my name is Akira Brand. Thank you so much for joining us for 12 Days of Security. Thank you, Jonathan, for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us, and we will see you for the next day of the 12 Days of Security. Bye-bye.